Good morning and welcome to New Beginnings House of Worship, where we come to worship a live and a living God. We thank you for being here with us today, and we're going to ask Sister Rosalind Turner to come with our morning welcome this day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to New Beginnings House of Worship. We pray that you will find something that will help you help take you along this week and that will just have you get closer to help increase your walk with God, have a closer walk with God. It's such a beautiful fall day. God is continuously restoring the earth as he's restoring us. Let's remember to keep everyone in prayer, especially our friends down in Florida that's still going through and trying to rebuild. But we know through all kinds of troubles and trials, God is always right there with us. We just have to keep holding on and never letting go. I would like to wish my beautiful sister a happy birthday. Her birthday, Judith, will be on Tuesday, October 11th. We pray that she will have a beautiful birthday. Also, our brother in Christ, Mr. Billy Bob, as we call him, Deacon William Butler, he will be celebrating his birthday on Thursday, October 13th. Hope he will have a beautiful day. And to our only lovely daughter, Ms. Rachel Turnipseed, she will be celebrating her birthday this Friday, October 14th, and we pray that she will enjoy her day. Happy birthday to you all, the October babies, this week, and we pray that everyone will have a blessed week. And remember, just hold on to Christ and walk in his beautiful name. Pastor Turnip C. Yes, thank you, Sister Rosalind. Uh, and so we want to, again, echo those birthday uh, wishes uh, to everyone, especially to our daughter coming up this Friday and all those that are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries during this month. We also want to go to you know, um, remind you that this is October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we want to uh, make sure that you are aware of the things that you need to do, uh, women and men. Uh, men can suffer from breast cancer as well. Uh, but we know that how prevalent, prevalent it is with, within the female community. And so we want to encourage you to get your mammograms, uh, go speak with your doctor. Uh, there's a lot <clears throat> of new information out nowadays and a lot of uh, treatment options for you uh, that it doesn't have to be a death sentence. When we hear that word cancer, uh, we, we, we get nervous and, and think that it's all over. And some people fear going to the doctor just from hearing that. Well, things have changed since the, the old days, as I may say it. <laughs> but we are wanting to encourage you, especially uh, ladies, if you have had a mammogram, talk with your doctor, see if you have dense breast tissue. There are additional uh, types of uh, uh, analysis that they can do uh, to make sure that they're able to detect um, any growth that may be there. So we encourage you, all of you breast cancer survivors that are out there, continue to give the support and encouragement to those who are going through. Amen. So this morning for our message, we do have a word from the Lord for you today, and it's going to come from the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter three, verse one, and then we'll go down to verse four and six. Uh, we're going to deal with this chapter pretty much, but we didn't want to read the entire chapter. We're going to read the verse 1 and then verses 4 and 6 and then deal with some issues throughout this text. We're going to be reading from the New King James Version for our initial text reading, uh, but then I will go to the King James as I'm uh, talking and uh, delivering this message today, just from a uh, visual standpoint from what I can see. All right, Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. And then verse four and six, and the word says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its width six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Verse four, then a herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, in symphony with all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the gold image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship 
shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Amen. That ends the reading of God's word this morning. And so just for a thought today, we want to leave with you, uh, stand up and stand out. Stand up and stand out. And our biblical truth for today, uh, which is also going to be posted on the screen, I'll be posted uh, after this message that you can go back to. Uh, the stand you take now, the stand you take today, will speak into your future. The stand you take today will speak into your future. You know, we're dealing with uh, a lot of things that's going on uh, this week uh, for many HBCUs or this month. You have homecoming and different colleges are celebrating their homecoming. TSU just had celebrated their homecoming here in Nashville. Uh, we were able to spend some time there. But uh, during times of celebration and joy, when people come back home and visit the college, uh, you have alumni from various uh, <laughs> dates back in the 60s coming back and 70s, visiting the campus, making donations, and just celebrating and have a time of joy. And then even just even outside of that, you know, having times of celebration is good. Uh, where you dance and, and you, you may uh, fellowship together and eat and, and there may be some drinking going on. Yes, that, yes, sometime that is. But if we're not in overindulging, whether that's food or drink, you can still have a good time. And, and celebrating is okay. We, we put so many restrictions and restraints on people that, that it sounds like Christians just can't have any kind of fun can't have any joy, no celebrations, no dancing, and all of this. And so during this time of, of celebration, and, and particularly with this homecoming week here going on, uh, they were, uh, they had a fish, they have a fish fry annually on, on campus at Tennessee State, and the, uh, the old, old schoolers were there, and, and young, new schoolers were there, and the old schoolers were up dancing to the music, and, and celebrating, and eating fish, and catching up on memories. And it's just a time of celebration. And I want to, again, emphasize that celebrations are not the problem. Dancing and listening to music is not the issue and or the problem. It's just what we do in our life along those terms, whether it's music, dancing, or whatever else uh, that we may be doing, uh, business ventures, that we can sometimes go down the wrong path. As we look into this text here today and this particular scripture. And as I mentioned to you, I will go back to the King James Version and, and some of the follow-up that we want to look at. And so when we look into this text here, we, there's a backdrop here when Daniel, um, well, first of all, Nebuchadnezzar had come and taken away the children of Israel into captivity. And we, uh, some of you know about the Babylonian captivity and how the people weren't doing what was right. They weren't doing the their, their worship of God wasn't right. Their, their, the way they treated each other wasn't right. Their love for each other. And so God punished them. And so they were taken away into captivity. And so uh, this Daniel came along and, and Daniel was able to uh, have favor with the king. You know, he was in, he and they mentioned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, and Daniel encouraged them to, to, to go on this fast, let's not eat the king's food. And that was a dangerous move, but they, they, they made it through that and they trusted God. And then D Daniel had a dream. I mean, the king had a dream and Daniel interpreted it. And some, a lot of things happened along that way. Daniel was in prison and, and the, the chief prisoner told them about uh, this man in, in captivity and in the prison that can interpret dreams. And he interpreted the king's dream. And this is what happens after that interpretation was given and all the king's wise men couldn't do it, but Daniel was able to. Let's look at chapter 2, verses 46 through 49. Uh, Daniel chapter 2, verses 46 through 49. And this, we want you to see what's going on here and understand something about the stand we take and how we stand out in society. Verse 46 says, Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshiped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him because he interpreted his dream and made it clear to him. 
The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king, or sat in the king's court. And so this backdrop, when we look into this text and we see how uh, the king recognized that Daniel had a gift and he trusted and listened, listened to him and, and get what he said uh, a little bit earlier. He said that your God is, uh, that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings. Well, he was partly right. Daniel's God is not God of gods. He's God of everything. There is no other God, number one. And sometimes we may want to give him credit for saying that he was the God of gods. No. There is no other God. He is the only God. And so, but the, the, the point being, and we, what we see in this text, is that the king Nebuchadnezzar recognized that who Daniel worshipped was truly the God. Now he says God of gods, still holding on to his form of worship, but placed Daniel's God over everyone's God. And so he was on his way to some revelation, but he just wasn't there. And don't you know that there's some people in life that uh, believe certain things? They're, they may say, yeah, yeah, I trust in this, I trust that, but I, all that other stuff, uh, that don't make any sense. And so when you really have an intimate relationship with God, and when you are wanting to rise above all that the world says, you have to get that intimate relationship with God. And once you develop that and listen to his voice and submit yourself to what God is saying, your future will be bright. The stand you take today will ultimately show up and speak into your future. Nebuchadnezzar recognized Daniel's God as being uh, the ultimate God. And we know that God is the only God. And so they gave oblations to Daniel. They did all these things to Daniel and, and gave Daniel what he wanted. That because Daniel took a stand early when they were uh, in, first taken into captivity. And as I mentioned to you, and they, they were in prison and, and they didn't eat the king's meat. That was offered to idol gods. Uh, they wanted to keep themselves uh, in a way that was pleasing before God. And so they just ate the fruits and vegetables and porridge and things of that nature that, that did not defile their bodies. And so what sort of stand are we taking today? Again, we can go to the celebrations and have a good time. Uh, at the game, they have all of the tailgating and all that's going on. Do you compromise yourself uh, just to be in the crowd? Do you change the way you dress just so that you can be more appealing and revealing about everything? Uh, do you smoke the smoke that everybody's smoking just because they're smoking it? Uh, are you drinking all the drinks that everybody else is drinking and, and, and getting uh, intoxicated, uh, drinking too much just because of the party scene? Well, we sometimes have to take that stand. We, have to, we can celebrate, but we don't have to go overboard. And so as we get into this text today, that that's kind of serves as a backdrop to some things that's going on right here in this text. Because there are some people that you may work for that say that they are a Christian organization, but they go on about doing some, some very shady and tricky things. And they'll have all the catchphrases to catch those who are Christian so that they'll come and do business with them. But they are working in uh underhanded ways. You may have a governor who says he's a Christian, but then carries out things in a way that you make you wonder, are you really loving of your neighbor as yourself? Are you really trying to help people better themselves? Or are you just a corporate man that's want to help 
people that have businesses like you or people who think only like you. There's a, there's, there's a problem in society that we can't uh, settle our differences and, and recognize that you might do this this way and I might do something another way, but we could still be friends. We don't have to necessarily do all the other things. And maybe one day if we really listen to each other, we'll find that those differences that we do share aren't really that great, aren't so great that we can't uh, love each other. Now, there are some things that people do that you do want to separate yourself from. And you should be wise enough and intelligent enough by reading God's word to see what you need to do. So let's look into this text today as we look. Uh, the first thing that I want you to get from this message today is don't bow down to the things of this world. Don't bow down to the things of this world. We can get caught up in some things by going along or just by working with people or, or being in their company and their presence all the time. And we can get caught up in some things that aren't good for us. We have to know how not to bow down to everything that society says. The world is going to tell you this is right and God's word doesn't make sense. Don't follow that. Let's look at verses 4 through 6 of Daniel chapter 3. After the king Nebuchadnezzar made this great image, after he has already said that Daniel's God is the God of gods, he's still <clears throat> dabbling in the things that of his past. He's creating images uh, to, to create his own gods and establishing things so that people will see him as some great person and his gods that he create as the only ones. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so when we look at this, this text here in verse 4 through 6, it says, Then an herald cried aloud. Here's the man going to tell you all the things that the king said to do. He's created this great image. Now you're going to have to bow down and worship, worship this image. After he's already said that Daniel's God is God of gods, he's still going about doing strange things. To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages. So just for a point of reference, notice that he here is this king. He has captured uh, the Jewish nation. He has other people there who he's probably captured and brought there too. So that's why he's speaking of people of all nations and languages. No matter what your language is or where you're from, this is what you have to do. That at what time, verse 5, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And guess what's going to happen? Verse 6, And whoso falleth not down and worships, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Society is telling you right now, churches across this nation, that you can and deliver your message, but you better not speak on the political issues. You can deliver your message, but if we find out, if someone raises a complaint that you are not allowing them in just because they believe something different, or you're not going to perform a service for certain groups of people because your beliefs are one way and theirs another, that they are still thinking of ways to, to persecute you, bring you up on charges, tell you what you can't do. And so as if they do that to our religious institutions, guess what? As individuals, we, we begin, to begin to believe that we don't have any rights. That um, anyone who's today can say that they stand for something, they can tell you that you have to accept it. And if you don't, then you are the one who's the problem. And so when we get into these situations and we look at what's going on in our lives, even again in our ways that we celebrate, which is a, such a joyous thing. Don't you know that Jesus was at all the sorts of celebrations and, and dealing with people and, and those in religious positions, uh, the leaders uh, were calling him uh, a devil worshiper, someone who would go in and a son of a devil, and someone who would go and uh, sit with those people, 
be around those people and, and, and commune and fellowship with those people. Something was wrong with them. So we can come on attack from the world and then from those people who think that they're doing God's bid, but they're not. Don't bow down to the things of the world. We stand up on the truth. We have to stand on what is true and the truth in God's word is the foundation of the truth that we must stand on. There are so many things that the world is telling us now, things that are a lie and this whole thing with uh, fake news and all of that stuff. And now we see our political leaders that will stand on a lie just to get power back. There are corporations that will stand on a lie just to make more profits. Oil companies that are making million, billions of dollars, excuse me, and then they're still saying they have to raise the prices because their profit level is going down, but they're still making billions of dollars and, and profiting uh, greatly. And so we're in this capitalistic society today that says we, we'll say anything to get what we want and to get more of it. And people are doing that everywhere now, uh, whether it's in politics, in business, or even in our homes and in our communities. And so are we standing on the truth? Are we able to love our neighbor as ourselves? If we really did, we wouldn't abide by and, and live under the lies that we hear. We stand up on the truth. Uh, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's the truth. And so how many of us out there, how many of you out there uh, are still worshiping things in your past that you know aren't, weren't good for you? Just because people don't, don't see you doing it. How many of us are bowing down to the ills of society uh, just so that we can fit in with the group? Or just so that we can have some profit or so we can get more people to like us on our uh, social media posts? They would say and do anything just to get more likes, just to get more likes. And that's a problem in our society today. We put everything else before God. And God says, I will have no, you should have no other gods before me because I am a jealous God. There is no other God but me. And so we have to watch that. Don't bow down to the things of this world. And peer pressure. Peer pressure will get you to do the things that you know you don't need to do. Uh, nobody's going to see. We're going to go over here. Don't worry about it. Uh, you won't surely die. You won't get pregnant. You won't catch some sexually transmitted disease because I don't have it. So uh, you could trust me. Uh, this stuff won't do. This This. This just make you feel good for the moment. And, 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 and so we do things. We take things. We say things that we should not be doing. Don't bow down to the things of this world. Even when the threat of death is before you, because God says there is no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I know that may sound strange when somebody is holding a gun at you, or we hear of all of these shootings and people dying, but those things will not prosper. If you've given your life to the Lord, we know that we will live eternally with him and not be condemned into the lake of fire. That's a promise that we don't see right now, but that God has made and we can trust it because he's fulfilled all the other promises he's ever made. The second thing that we need to worry about and think about when we're talking about stand up and stand out. See, you can't stand out if you're bowing down to the things of this world and doing the things that the world does. You're not even taking a stand. You're not standing up for anything but wrong. The second thing that we need to do in this message, that this message from God is telling us to don't worry about your haters. There are people that are against you, that want to see you, your downfall. These men were jealous of Daniel and jealous of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why? Because they were foreigners and they're coming in uh, having the rule over us. Their second, Daniel was second only to the king. And then the king allowed Daniel to appoint his buddies to be rulers over us? We're not having that up in here. And so these men were jealous. They were envious. 
they didn't like the fact that these guys did these things. And they, they tried to plot against Daniel to get him uh, in trouble. But Daniel always survived because he trusted in God. Don't worry about your haters. Look at verse 8. It says, Wherefore, at the time, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They could, uh, I'm going to read verse 9, 2, and 10. And they spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You know, they, they, they're sucking up. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Verse 12, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Your haters, they're looking at you. They see you taking a stand. They see you trying to stand out, that they're still going to try to come against you. Now, let's stop for a moment and recognize that Scripture tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness. And so we don't worry about the people trying to attack us. We need to look at this thing and say, what is Satan trying to keep me from? What is he trying to threaten me with? And so whether it's eviction, losing a job, losing a, uh, a loved one to illness or, or whatever else, don't allow Satan to get you distraught and thinking that God is not for you. God is still for you. You just have to endure through some things. See, that's one of the things that we don't like to talk about a lot, our endurance, how we put up with things. Because people think that if you endure through some things, hardships that people throw you away, uh, that, that you're just punking out, that you're, you're, all, that you, you're soft, you, you're, you're not taking a stand. Yes, you have to take a stand, but you have to take a stand the right way. Don't do it the way the world says. If you're in, in tune with the Spirit, God will reveal the schemes of your haters. He'll reveal it. He'll make it known, and you'll see it. And when you see it, don't respond the way that they responded against you. You respond in, in the kindness of God's Word. That doesn't mean that you just sit there and say, okay, go on and slap me upside the head, beat me and spit all on me. No, it doesn't mean that. Yes, I know scripture says turn the other cheek. That means when it's really talking about turning the other cheek, it's that you, number one, you don't retaliate the way they are. And number two, you let them know that that, that you've done to me can't hurt me. No matter how painful it is physically but it can't stop me from doing what I'm doing. As a matter of fact, if you will do it again, so be it. But my God is my God. He's, he's my revenge, uh, the, the one who has revenge. He says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And so don't you worry about what your, your schemers and your haters try to do against you. God will reveal their, their schemes and plans. I will make your enemies your footstool, the word says. How does that happen? by holding true to God's word and not allowing the things that they say come against you, I mean, that they say to come against you to rise up and cause you to act in another way. You need to stand up and stand out. What are you standing up on? The truth of God's word, the foundation of God's word. Don't allow your haters to get you to act and respond in a way that's not like you. Don't sit there and say, I'm gonna lay my religion down just to get back at them. The ones that plot on you, God has them in sight and God will take care of them. Don't worry about your haters. Those people that are plotting against you, you know those people that want to see you not succeed, they want to see you fail in everything you do. They don't want you, they, they see you dating somebody, they're going to try and come up against that and try and sneak in and, and, and it disrupt your relationships, your marriage, your, you know, whatever it is that's going on in your life, a state of uh, relationship that you may be in. You may not even be married yet and they, they'll still try, try to come in and disrupt your, uh, the good thing that God has for you. Don't allow people to do that. Uh, they're going to try, but that don't mean that you have to give in and allow them to do anything. 
Don't you allow people to try to disrupt your family, your home, your job, even your community. As mothers across this country have been standing up against the violence against their sons and their daughters in this country, that we don't just sit back and allow that to happen. We speak out and we stand on the truth of God's word. And that's not punking out. And that's not being uh, uh, weak. That means you take your stand on the truth based on God's word. Don't worry about your haters. God will deal with them. And we'll see that in this text. The last thing that I want you to see before we uh, get further into this text is that don't give a second thought to what your response will be. Don't give a second thought to what your response will be. If you have been standing on the truth of God's word, you don't have to think about what you're going to say next. The Holy Spirit is there to give you exactly what you need to do. I, I can recall in my own life, uh, dealing with issues and situations. And when I used to travel a lot, I'd be thinking about things and saying, I'm going to do this or that if this happened. And God said, no, you won't. Hmm? And I'm thinking, and I'm, I'm listening to God. And he said, no, you won't. You're going to respond the way that I've already taught you how to respond. And in and, and, and one instance, that thing came up and, I, and, I, and that did happen. <laughs> that uh, at one, one uh, point in particular, the very thing that I was thinking about, God said, see, now watch. You're going to respond the way I have already taught you to respond. And if we just listen to the spirit of God speaking to us, we will do just what God has already asked us to do. And we will have to worry about what kind of response we're going to take. Now, if you don't know the Lord and you haven't given your life to the Lord, then don't worry about that. The Holy Spirit still speaks to you. He may not, you may not hear clearly all the time. Uh, and the reason you don't hear clearly is because your mind's clouded with all the things of the world. The prodigal son had to get his, his life refocused and had to come to himself so that he can realize that there's something better for him if he just go back to his father's house. And that's what God wants from all of us, to come back to the father. Listen to what God has to say. Yes, we've all stumbled and we've all fallen. We've made mistakes along the way. But if you really trust in God and making that true stand on the foundation of his word, you don't have to worry about the, the haters in your life. You don't have to bow down to the things of this world. And you don't have to give a second thought to what you're going to do if you just listen to the word of God. Trust in God. Know that he is able God has never promised something to us and reneged on that promise. You can read through scripture and find it. And even in other religions, you can see where the God that, that they speak of when they, um, uh, well, let's, 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 let's stay away from that for a moment because there are some that's, that still deal with uh, God as the God. They call him by a different name uh, and they're saying that's still God. But then there's some that are calling God as other gods. And so we, I, I don't want to get into a distinction of who's doing what and saying what. But when you trust God, the only God, <laughs> uh, the, the true God that he is, to do what he says he will do, when he speaks to you, he will indeed do that. So we look at verse 16 and 18. Daniel chapter 3. After they had been accused by these other men, and it was true, they did not bow down. They took a stand. They decided to stand out. And now the king became furious that somebody had the nerve not to bow down. And then after I have appointed you and given you this position, and you're not bowing down, you're not following my command, I'm the king, when I say something, that's what's going to be done and everybody's going to do it. There's no, no if, ands, or buts about it. Don't you know there are people that speak that sort of uh, talk over your life? That this is what I said and you're going to do it one way or the other? Look at, look at what happened. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. King, the king had already told him, said, all right, I'm going to give you one more chance. Y'all better, when y'all hear this music, y'all better bow down and do what I told you to do. They said, but we won't be careful in this matter about how we're going to answer. 
They're not, they're not, they're not giving a second thought to what their response is going to be. Verse 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that he will not that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They took a stand. They did not have a second thought about what their response would be. We're not going to give in to this. If you want to throw us into the fire furnace, we believe that our God would deliver us. But you know what? Guess what? If he doesn't deliver us from that fiery furnace, we're still not going to do it because we know who our God is. And see, sometimes when people, when things happen to Christians, people say bad things aren't supposed to happen to us, only the good things. And so uh, then when something bad happens, they think that God did not, was not there for them. And that's not true. God says the sun will shine on the just and the unjust and the rain will fall on the just and the unjust. There are things that happen to all of us. But guess what? If you take that stand and not, a, not give in to the ways of the world, you know that you have taken the right stand and eternal life is there for you. We can't put our hands to the plow and look back at all the things that are going on. That is why Jesus took so much care with Peter. When Peter uh, kept talking about, no, Lord, we're not going to allow you to go to the cross and, and die that way. Uh, we're standing. He said, no, this is what you, you're speaking like, like an evil one. He said, get thee behind me, Satan, because you're speaking the wrong way. You're trying to keep me from my destiny. And so then Peter, when he, he told him, he said, when the cock crows, will, will crow, not crow three times, and you'll, you'll uh, uh, disavow me. And so when that happened in Peter's life, and he was so sad, when Jesus died and came back, he came and spoke to Peter. After he brought in this, helped them catch this great catch of, catch of fish, he says, do you love me more than these? He came to restore Peter because Peter was precious. He was necessary. All of us are necessary. We're children of God, and God says, you are precious in my sight. I don't care how you have messed up along the way. The things that you have done, the people who've come up against you, the bad things that may have happened in your life, I still love you and I'm going to redeem you back to me so that you will not fall prey like Judas did and get so upset and distraught and hang yourself and there's no ch chance for redemption. And so... When you are caught up in things, don't give a second thought to the response that you're going to give. They say we will not be careful in our answer. We're going to stand firm on what your word says, what the word of God says, and not the ways of the world, King. We're not going to bow down to your ways. He is able to do exceedingly. Our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above what you could ever think or imagine. When you see yourself and find yourself in a situation that, is, that seems that you yourself can't get out of it, and that's what we need to recognize sometime in life, that you have no power. But when we trust God, that we, we, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, we know that our strength and power comes from Jesus Christ, and that's how we survive through the situations of life. And so if you are caught up in those things and you're thinking those things are going to come against you, just know that God is going to do just what he says he's going to do. Here's some witnesses. Ask Daniel. He is able to stop the mouths of lions. And so when Daniel was cast into the lion's den and they tried to plot and plan against him. Those, his haters came up against him and told that he wasn't, uh, he, he's praying all day long and not doing what the king says, that he was delivered out of the mouths of lions. And God will do that to you, those who are trying to devour you. God will deliver you in the midst of that if you stand up and stand out for, for God. Ask Moses if he's able to part the Red Sea and, and cause dry land to appear. And when your enemies are at your back and it looks like you can't get through because of the obstacles before you, God will open up a way and cause you to walk through and pass through that without 
any hurt, harm, or danger, or anything slowing you down to keep you in danger's way. God will deliver you from those things. Ask Joseph if he is able to uh, use what people meant for evil or bad against you and turn it into good. God will do that when people come up and try to destroy you. Your, his own family wanted to kill him, but one brother said, no, you can't kill him. He's our father's favorite son, and he's our brother. We just throw him in this pit and, and tell our father that he's dead. And when people do evil things against you to come against you, if you just stand on the truth of God's word and not allow the things of this society or the, what the things people say or what the government tells you you cannot do, you need to, need to make a stand for God and stand up and stand out. Ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego if he is able to deliver you from the fiery furnace. When the old king threw them into the fiery furnace because they made their stand, they weren't careful in their answer. They, they knew what they were going to say and what they were going to do. They were going to still worship God in the midst of all that was going on, all the music being played and all the other things going on. They were going to make a stand and stand out for who they believed in. And so when they threw him in the fiery furnace, he, the king looked around and asked his men, said, wait a minute, I thought we put three men in there. I see four men in there. And one looked like the son of God. And he was really just saying the son of gods. He still wasn't recognizing God for the God that he was. But he recognized something different going on. And he called them out of the fiery furnace. And then he recognized that these men that were plotting against them, the haters, those schemers that were scheming against them, he threw them into the fiery furnace. And of course, they were consumed. And God, when, when you are in the midst of that fiery furnace that you're going through, the things in life that's going through you, if you truly stand up and stand out on the truth of God's word, I know everybody's looking at you and then talking about you and saying, look at the, all that, that they went through. They're going through this, that, or the other, but God will deliver you from that, whether it's drugs, alcohol, sexual abuse, or whatever it may be in your life that's, that's causing you so much pain and heartache. Maybe the death of a loved one and you, you've fallen into despair. God will deliver you if you stand up on his word, stand for the truth that he has delivered to you and trust him and you will come out of that without even the smell of the fire that you were in on your body. That's good news. God will deliver you if you just stand up and stand out. Sometimes you, you may fall prey to some things in your life, but then you, as the prodigal son did, you have to stand up and call to remembrance the things that God has done for you in your life. You may not have always done the right thing and stood for the right cause, but when you recognize that this thing that's coming against you cannot stand and I will not fall prey to this anymore, I'm tired of living like this, that you too can be delivered from the things that God has for you. Be different. Let your enemies see your God at work on your behalf. Verse 23 and 26 shows us how when they saw Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego in the fiery furnace, that they bore witness to the fact that these men were not consumed by the, the anger and the hate that someone had towards them. And don't you know that there are people that hate people so much that they'll do anything to see that them see that they are destroyed. And we don't have to fall prey to those types of things. We don't have to live that kind of lifestyle. We need to stand up on the truth of God's word and stand out. Are you going to be for God or are you going to be for the, what, the way the ways of this world? Jesus on Calvary said, you know what? I am going to allow myself to be hung to this cross to be nailed to this cross, this tree, which said that I would be a curse. And so the curse really wasn't on Jesus anymore. When he gave himself, he allowed himself to be that curse, but the curse did not fall on him and stay on him. The curse was for the sins that you and I have committed in this world. The curse was on all those who would live that way. The curse was on that type of lifestyle. But Jesus stood 
and stood up on the truth of what his father says, that if you, if you allow yourself to be a living sacrifice for mankind, I will redeem mankind back to me through the acts that you have committed, and you will be the savior of the world. And isn't that good news that we can go to Calvary's cross and allow our sins to be taken away because Jesus has already done that. We don't do it. Jesus has already done it for us. And so we just, when we go to Calvary's cross, it's that we are accepting the work that Jesus had already done, that he is Lord and Savior of our life, that he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, not Nebuchadnezzar's King, not the, the <clears throat> excuse me, not the gods of this world, but we are trusting in what God has for us. And so we want to offer Christ to you this day, that if you're out there and you've been dealing with some situations in your life, there are some things that have been really tearing at you. You know that that lifestyle isn't right. And you've, you're tired of dealing with the ways of the world saying that this is right and God's word is wrong. You may not quite understand it all, but that's where getting yourself into a good church, or finding a Bible-believing church, and, and listening to the Word of God to strengthen you daily, and doing your own reading, and spending some intimate time with God, that you will be strengthened, and each trial that you go through, God will deliver you from that. And God says, I allow those trials to come so that you can be strengthened, and you can see how strong you truly are, because I see it in you. God sees it in us, how strong we really are if we trust him and don't get outside of ourselves and try to move too far ahead, but walk closely with God and the spirit of Christ that is in us as he guides us through everything. If you are out there and want to give your life to God, go on and put your name in the comment section and we'll get with you and help you find that salvation and we'll speak those words over your life and allow you to be a part of the membership of the body of Christ. Yes, we would love to have you be a part of New Beginnings House of Worship as we continue to serve God on this side of glory. But the most important thing is that you give your life to Christ and, the, and we'll help you find a church if you need to find one in your area or even here in Nashville. Give your life to Christ. And if you don't wanna put your name in the chat uh, or the comment section here, you can uh, contact me at Pastor New Beginnings, H-O-W at gmail.com. It's on the, it will be on the screen at the end of this post. Uh, Pastor New Beginnings, H-O-W at gmail.com, and we'll get in touch with you. Or you can just call me at 615-473-5464. That's 615-473-5464. And leave me a message, uh, and we'll get in touch with you. And so if you would like to give to this ministry, we want you to be able to do that as well to help support the things that we've been doing, uh, especially as we come to approach this holiday season time. We'll be doing some things to help uh, support people and families. We, we really love working towards families and helping families through situations. Uh, we've helped families in, uh, uh, during the holiday season last year in Memphis, here in Nashville, and through fires and uh, other things and floods and Waverly, uh, things that have happened. And so we want you to be able to give at givelify.com. Uh, you don't have to download the app if you don't want to, but if you like to give online, you can go through givelify.com. Look for our location, New Beginnings House of Worship at 3919 Kings Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37218. And you may just find New Beginnings HOW uh, and then look for 3919 Kings Lane. Nashville, Tennessee, you can give there. Or you can just simply mail it to us at, Nash at New Beginnings House of Worship at the address here on the screen. We thank you and we, we, we thank God for your presence here today. And we want you to think of your family and friends that you think with this message may help them. Share that message with them. Hit the like button as often as you can. Uh, and just share this message with your family and friends. And come and serve and worship with us uh, again on Sundays at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. And so remember, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, that you ladies out there, make sure that you get yourself checked. And men, just check yourself for any lumps as well and your, your, your breast. Uh, and so make sure that uh, there are those men that, uh, men that can get breast cancer.
keep yourself in check. And so make sure that you're speaking to your doctor about the type of uh, options you have before you uh, for your treatment and diagnosis. We love you and we hope that this message has done something to inspire you and help you throughout this day. And so we want you to, uh, again, as we mentioned earlier, share this message with your family and friends. And until next week, God bless you and God keep you.